So let's go back to Hosea and let's begin here. Come, let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live in his presence. Let us know eagerly and strive to know the Lord. His going forth is sure as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter rain that watereth the earth. O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is the morning cloud and as a dew that early passeth away. In other words, they don't do so well so long. Now, in times past, I have always placed this prophecy as a future fulfillment, taking it, looking at the three days. Instead of being three literal days, I took it. And it, listen, it's not a wrong to take and type things uh, 3,000 years as the day of the Lord is 1,000 years. All right, but in this particular case here, I didn't realize Hosea, the prophecy of Hosea chapter six being fulfilled 2,000 years ago. After two days will he revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his presence. Remember Ezekiel, the valley full of dry bones that I just did the message for you recently, right? Let's just, so you know, Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and the Lord carried me out in the spirit and set me down in the midst of, a, of the valley, and it was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. He said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. How many of you are familiar that there were, I think it was the tribe of Ephraim that went up out of the land of Egypt before they were supposed to go up, thinking this was the time to go, and they died in battle, and their bones were left right there between the promised land and Egypt. They never were buried. Just a thought. Just wondering if you, if you guys remember that. But anyway, Ezekiel prophesies of these dry bones. Then he said unto me, prophesy over these bones, say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. Notice that, breath to enter into you. Wow. How many of you remember the, the message I did? Let me let me just pull this up real quick. Um uh, let's see. I think this was over on Israeli News Live that I did this message about, oh, it's just amazing. Ezekiel in the Dead Sea Scrolls there. Here we go right there. And that one verse right there that we didn't have in our, our own, a little worded a little differently anyway. You find that in the Dead Sea Scrolls. But he asked, Ezekiel literally asked, he's talking about right here, the bone, connect to the bone and the joint with this joint, etc. You know, the sinews, the valley of dry bones, Ezekiel 37. Then he says, oh, Yahweh, when will these things happen? And Yahweh said to me, we got a little blank spot, but he says, and a tree will bend over and straighten up. And you remember, I told you the sister Mun Mun was her YouTube name, and she shares with me right after that about how that... Uh, uh, she shares with me how that in 1 Corinthians 23, and let me just share that with you. I didn't, didn't think to put it up here, but I'll go to it. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23. I want you to be able to see it because some people didn't realize it. But we preach Christ crucified in the Jews in a stumbling block. And the word stumbling block, as I scroll over that, if you'll look down there, is... A trap stick that is a snare, occasion of fault, stumbling, offense thing that offends, a stumbling block. Right there, if you notice right after the trap stick, a bent sapling. A bent sapling. What do you know? You think maybe Paul knew Ezekiel, the particular one like in the Dead Sea Scrolls, that we didn't have? You think maybe he might have known something like that? Sure he did. Sure he did. So, I mean, it's exciting to me. These things are exciting. So Ezekiel 
It was prophesying of Christ. When, when would Ezekiel be fulfilled? In other words, when would Ezekiel 37 be fulfilled? When the tree is bent over. When Christ died on the cross and was laid over. And then he straightens back up again. So then we come to Hosea, the prophecy of Hosea. Right? Oh, and Ezekiel, sorry. After two days will he revive us. On the third day he will raise us up that we may live in his presence. He comes as what? The, as, as unto us, as the rain, as the latter rain that watereth the earth. Let's take a look at some of these things. Matthew 27, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many of the bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Oh, wow. So there were people that had been sleeping in the dust of the earth that actually resurrected. And if not to forget as well, Job, what does Job say? That with an iron pen and lead, they were graven in the rock forever. Let's start with verse 23 right here. Oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. That with an iron pen and lead, they were graven in the rock forever. But as for me, I know that my Redeemer liveth. And that he, according to the King James Version, I believe it is, if we look at that, um, that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. That's how King James words it there. And that he will witness at the last upon the dust. Well, that's not. That's definitely not a good translation. And afterwards, in other words, at the latter time, upon the dust shall he stand. Do you realize what he's saying when he says that? It's more precious than you could ever even imagine. Let's look at Genesis chapter 2. Then the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Oh, wow. There it is. See? Right there he says, Elohim et Adam afar min hadamah. That word right there, afar. All right, let me highlight this for you. And there it is, alone. Uh, Ein fe resh afa. He formed the man of the dust of the ground. And what did he do to him? And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Nishmar chayim ve pak ve paav nishmar chayim ve. Excuse me. Yahi hadam le nefesh chaya, and the man become a living soul. Why do we say that? Because Job said what? Right? Job said. But as for me, I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he will witness or that he at the afterwards at the, at the latter time will rise up. Yakum. He will rise up. He will resurrect. But it's not just a resurrection. Alafah. Okay. Upon the dust. He rises up. In other words, he brings Ezekiel 37 to a fruition. These bones are dry. They're laying on the dust of the earth. But Christ resurrects and brings them with him. And we already saw that Matthew says many that were asleep in the, in, in, the, in the earth and the graves were open and many of the bodies of the saints were slept arose, right? We got that. We got Job declaring it as well. And when after my skin and this is destroyed, then without my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself. Mine eyes shall behold, not another's. In other words, not of somebody else's eyes. My reins are consumed within me. That's exciting, isn't it? So Hosea says that. Oh, wow. Ephraim. What shall I do unto thee, O Judah? That, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is the morning cloud is due. That early it passes away. Let me see what else I may have had written down here just so I don't miss anything. Uh, also in, yeah, Job, we already did Job. Got Genesis there. See? Mm. Now we're in Ephesians. Here, another one to prove what was going on. While Christ, he, when Christ wasn't just, when he died on the cross, three days he was buried. What else went on? The scripture says in Ephesians, 
Chapter 4, verse 8, wherefore he saith, When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. He gave gifts unto man. Then he ascended. What is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? That he descended is the same also that ascended up above, far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. Mm. Oh, my. Peter notices as well, 1 Peter chapter 3, for Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Now the ones that were in prison were those fallen angels that had cohabitated with, these, with the women on the earth and brought forth these giants. You know, there's somebody made a comment out there. They said, well, we can debunk your whole Nephilim doctrine, Steve, with one quote. The angels of heaven are neither, they neither marry nor are given in marriage. If, if anything, it supports what I teach on that. Because the whole point was they sinned against God. They went against what God had said for them to do. And the very fact that they came down and did this, they went against the natural course that God had ordained them for. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been a sin, would it? If God didn't say the angels, see, in fact, he actually says, if you're going back to that scripture, it's because I think it's like something like, no, you're not that we would be like the angels. You know, they neither are married nor are given in marriage. You know, talking about the resurrection because they were asking the question about, uh, and I'm just trying to go back and remember this a little bit. You know, there's, there's one man, they had a wife. He died and his, they didn't have no children. Then the next one marries her and he dies and have any children. And at the end, after they all die, nobody has kids. Whose wife is she going to be in the resurrection? He says, you know, you, you err not on the scripture. In heaven, you don't get, you're not married, you don't get, you're not given into marriage. You're like the angels. Well, there's the point right there. Yeah, up there you don't, but down here you did. The angels that fell, they fell what? They didn't, they weren't given in marriage up there. That's right. They didn't have a sexual relationship. But when they fell, that's why they're called Nephilim or Nephilim. In this case, they are the Nephilim because they are the fallen ones. And the Nephilim are the children of the fallen ones. As Moses clearly writes it in, in his own in his own wording there, so the whole case is is moot as far as that goes. All right, now so let's take a look. So anyway, he preached. In the, so so he was down there doing things, but also those that had died, those believers, they were resurrected. So see, God didn't forget them. He didn't forget them at all. Let's move on down in Hosea. All right, so therefore he said, I have hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. Thy judgment goeth forth as the light, for I desire mercy and not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God, rather than burnt offerings, but they like men have transgressed the covenant. There they have dealt treacherously against me. You know, and actually the word here I have highlighted to the left here is it's Adam's name right there. There you go, Adam. Ka'adom. Because the the chet uh, the, uh, right here is for the word like or as, as Adam, you might say. But they, as Adam, they broke the covenant. They transgressed the covenant of God. Think about these things. Gilead is a city of them that work iniquity. It is covered with footprints of blood. And as troops of robbers wait for a man, so doeth the company of priests. See there, the company of priests. Right there, the Kohanim. Company of priests. What do the company of priests do? They murder in the way. They got on there towards Shechem. You can take it as Shechem, but King James, they translate it as consent. Also, the word Zephaniah is also translated as consent. I don't quite understand why. Uh, I've tried to research this as much as I could, but yet they commit lewdness or enormity, the worst of the worst sins. 
That's also zima is also the word that is used when it's talking about sexual sins over in the Dead Sea Scrolls. But notice they murder in the way towards Shechem or by consent. And which another thing as well. It doesn't say anything towards Shechem in, the, in there. Shechemah. It's on the road, in the way, by consent. Murder. Now, I got to share some things with you on that right there. John chapter 20. Then Jesus said unto them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. When he heard, when he had said this, he breathed, on, oh wait a minute, this is actually a different one. Sorry. I uh, forget exactly why I have that in there. Hang on, bear with me just one moment. Huh. Yeah, oh, I know, I remember why I had that on there because I meant to bring this out as I was talking about earlier about breathing upon them. See, because of this, remember, they were upon the, the dust of the earth and I was showing you how that beautiful type was in there. Right, and uh, that was also where Jesus he breathed upon them, and he, he said, uh, uh, "Excuse me, receive you the Holy Holy Ghost." Again, showing that he was the same God that breathed in the nostrils of Adam, the same God Jesus Christ was standing there in the very midst. So you have to kind of realize who is actually there. Let's see what we have here, John chapter eight. Yeah, here, here we go. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. When they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery. The very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger he wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and he said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. You know, I always thought it was fascinating too. The fact that he wrote on the ground with his finger. He's at the temple. Why is he writing on the ground with his finger? You know, for one, he's showing that he's the same God. Just like he's the same God that breathed in the nostrils of Adam in the beginning. As we read in Genesis just a moment ago. Let me just remind you of that. See, right there. He breathed in his nostrils the breath of life. You have to remember, what is the breath of life? The breath of life is the fruit from the tree of life. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. What? There it is right there. Chaim. In the midst of the garden. Jesus Christ is that tree of life. And he was doing what? He was breathing the fruit of the tree of life within Adam. And he become what? That's in the singular here. Why is it in the singular? Why did he breathe it in the plural then? Because inside of him was Eve. And Eve was going to receive the same Holy Spirit. Just like John the Baptist was born Filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. In other words, he had that Chaim in him already. He was a Chaya. A living soul, a nefesh Chaya. And he is a type of the bride of Christ. Filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Oh, wow. So many beautiful things here we could talk about, right? But anyway, so, <laughs> whichever one of you is there without sin, let him cast the first stone. Now, why do I take you to that? Because Hosea says here, and as troops of robbers wait for a man, so do it the company of priests. They murder in the way by consent. Right? Now, let me just show you so you know where I'm taking this from. Matthew right here. Right? Uh, no, I'm sorry. That wasn't the right one. I, I thought I had it up here, but I didn't. Anyway, in the English, English Hosea, is they murder by consent. If you want to say towards Shechem, it's okay. But it's not Shechem in Hebrew. Shechemah. So we know that it would have to be consent and not the case of the land of Shechem. All right? Because then it wouldn't have the hay at the end right here. You wouldn't have that letter right there. So, but anyway, they're murdering by consent. How do we know they're murdered by consent? Because Moses had given the commandment for those that are committing adultery. If adultery is committed, you're to take both the man and the woman and you take them and you stone them. Now, in the story there that we read here in John, 
They only bring the woman. And I believe that really and truly what you're dealing with when God was given this command was to put a stop to the adulterous affairs like they were doing when the children of Israel came to the, the land and they were dealing with Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Jebusites, and all of them because why? They had mixed their seed with Nephilim bloodlines. And we know this because of Numbers uh, we also know it from Ezra chapter 9. I've gone to that so many times you should know by now. Numbers uh, also chapter 13, I think it is the last verse in there where we find out that they were the Nephilim in those days, uh, the sons of Anak, the Canaanites, etc. So I believe it's one of the reasons, that's just a conjecture on my part, why God put the law in there. So the law was there. So when they had sinned like they did, like the, like the nations had done, God wanted to put that out of out of out of the place there, but in this case here, we find out they're bringing this woman that's been caught in adultery. They only bring the guy, just the woman, and they wanted to stone her. And Hosea prophesied about those guys, and he likened them into a bunch of robbers. And the company of priests, and there's a whole company of priests, they they murder in the way. The word way, derech here, is in other words, it is a way that has been permitted, but because they're not doing it justly, it's murder. And they're trying to tempt Jesus, right? So what does Jesus say? Now Moses in the law commanded us, first they say this, Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? They said that tempting him, that they might have to accuse him, but Jesus stooped down with his finger and he wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued to ask him, he lifted up himself and he said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out by one, one by one, beginning at the eldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. And when Jesus had lifted up himself, he saw no one but the woman. And he said to her, Woman, where are thou? those thine accusers, that no man condemn thee. She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. You see, there's mercy. What does Hosea even say? What was it? What did we do? Was it right above it, I believe, or no, a little further down? Yeah, no, right here, verse six. For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offering. Do you realize that he was prophesying of Christ? See, Christ desired mercy, not sacrifice. When they're doing this like this, it's like offering a sacrifice, a murder by consent. But in the eyes of God, it's just murder. Again, conjecture. You can take it different ways, I'm sure, but it's just a thought I want to share with you. Let's look at this in the book of Romans. Therefore thou art excusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest to us the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And again, also, we might take a look at the book of Matthew. Judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you, you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Now, I share that with you because, one, they brought this woman out ready to stone her, they were like that company of priests of Hosea prophesied that murder in the way by consent, right? And at the same time, they get convicted upon their heart and they walk out. So therefore, I wanted to share with you Matthew chapter 7, where Jesus clearly shows, And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? I believe they were convicted because of their own sins. And their sins convicted them because they're ready to kill this woman of something that they're guilty of. Huh. And like Ezra clearly identifies as well. For they have taken, who's they? The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands, doing according to their abominations. The abominations of, this, of the people that are listed right here, Canaanites, Hittites, etc., 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 
were sexual sins of mingling their seed with Nephilim races. And the priests and the Levites had gotten involved in that, for they have taken of their daughters for themselves, for their sons, that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands. Those peoples of the lands were Nephilim hybrids. No wonder why Hosea also says, I think early on in here, O Ephraim, what shall I do unto the Judah? What shall, oh, wait, no, it's actually near the end here. Yes, right here. In the house of Israel, I have seen a horrible thing. Their harlotry is found in Ephraim. Israel is defiled. Now, that's the house of Israel. Isn't it interesting that he actually states this right after when he says a company of priests, they murder in the, murder in the way by consent or towards Shechem. And then he says that the house of Israel have seen a horrible thing. Their harlotry is found in Ephraim. Israel is defiled. But he doesn't leave Israel by itself, just like we see over in the book of Ezra, chapter 9. Oh, Judah, there is a harvest appointed for you. When I would turn the captivity of my people. <laughs> where, was Israel, where was Judah held in captivity? Babylon. What's the harvest that she had? Well, Ezra tells you right there. They did according to the sins of same thing that House of Israel did. Same thing the Canaanite, Hittites, Perzite, Jebusites, Ammonites, Moabites, Egyptians, and Amorites did. They mingled their seed. All right, those of you that don't believe these type things, let's just let's, <laughs> hey, let's let's face the facts. Let's take a look at it. Let's don't leave it without. Let's don't leave something undone. Numbers chapter thirteen, last verse in here. Or no, Amalek dwelleth in the land of the south. The Hittite and the Jebusite and the Amorite dwelleth in the mountains. And the Canaanite dwelleth in the sea and along by the side of the Jordan, right? Well, what do you know? And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who come of the Nephilim. And we were in our own sight as the grasshoppers, and so were we in their sight. And that second word, Nephilim, should be Nephilim. There's no extra yod in there like you have right here. All right. So that's who really is going on. Isn't it fascinating, though? God knew their harlotry and also shows by Hosea that Judah was going to fall prey to the same thing. I just am blown away by prophecies. Now, as we get ready to close here, Hosea chapter 8. I'll say this one for another day. That's a different message altogether. I think I will just mention this. Will, will they cry unto me, my God? We, Israel, know thee. Israel hath cast off that which is good. The enemy shall pursue him. They have set up kings, but not from me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Hasmonean dynasty had overthrew what was going on back then. You know, the time has come to expose the serpent and who he really is. God fulfilled his prophecy, and Ephraim, Shall I do unto thee, for your goodness is the morning glow. See, he, but he does prophesy, after two days he will revive us, and on the third day he will raise us up, that we may live in his presence. And they received that life in his presence when Christ came 2,000 years ago. It was a remnant, and it is a fulfillment of Acts chapter 2. And I know that there's still some that is fully persuaded that the Acts chapter 2 is not the fulfillment of Zechariah. I'm going to go into that on another day. I would have loved to have done it now, but uh, it just isn't the right uh, best time for me to do that as of right now. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to share this information with you, show you what's going on. I trust it's a blessing to you. Uh, don't forget, uh, we do have the other channels that are going on, especially brand new tube. Uh, my wife really putting out a lot of videos there. Uh, we'll be putting other videos there as well. It's Israeli News Live on Brand New Tube. This is the uh, account right here. Um, as you can see, actually not Israeli News Live, I apologize. It's Stephen and Yana Ben Noon on uh, Brand New Tube. And Yana's already got 
oh, what is it, six videos posted up in there. So definitely subscribe, jump over there. A lot of good people there. A lot of truthers have gone to this platform as well. And uh, uh, so we really hope to be able to share more of this information with you. And uh, uh, yeah, breaking Israel news. Israel to lock down nation on eve of Rosh Hashanah, the mi mystery of 10 days. Uh, yeah, Bonnie uh, Harvey had shared with me the information originally about this. So I was asking her for some of the links. Uh, Israel locked down through all, through all three feasts. Uh, uh, that was also on the news there. And uh, so a lot of, lot of information going on about this right now. Uh, but uh, God bless you. Thank you. Bonnie says she's looking for the actual written document. She did share with me some different uh, clips here on YouTube about this. And uh, so we'll be updating you more later, maybe just on that issue alone. I'm Stephen Benoon with Danoon Institute of Biblical Research, Israeli News Live, Fact News Network, also Patreon, Israeli News Live. God bless you and thank you for listening.